Okay. Um, so this is a quick video on comparing fractions. Um, your assignment today will have you comparing fractions, so I wanted to make sure that you knew how to do it. Um, so when we compare fractions, we have three strategies. The first one is we can find a common denominator. And once we have the fractions rewritten with the common denominator, um, then we can just compare the numerators and see which fraction is greater. So this one, this is a go-to strategy. This one will work every single time. You can follow the same pattern, the same steps every single time with a common denominator. The second strategy is to think about the distance each fraction is from benchmarks, like one half, one whole, and zero. So if you can kind of figure out um, which fraction is closer to zero, or which fraction is closer to one half, or one whole, um, then that can help you compare the fractions that way. I would say this is a great strategy when you're given fractions that you're familiar with. Um, fractions that you've worked a lot with, but it's not the best strategy when you're given random fractions. And then the last strategy is to convert the fractions to decimals and then compare your decimals. Um, converting to decimals will also always work. You will always just follow the same steps. Um, so personally, I would recommend sticking with either strategy one or strategy three. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to do the first example. I've got two sevenths and three eighths, and I wanna see which one is greater. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and convert these so that they have a common denominator. So the easiest way to do a common denominator is just take both fractions, and if I start with two sevenths, I'm gonna multiply by the other fraction's denominator. Okay, so I'm gonna do seven times eight and two times eight. So my new fraction will be 16 over 56 versus, and then same thing, I'm gonna take, this is my second fraction, so I'm gonna take my first fraction's denom denominator and multiply it by this whole fraction. So seven times three is 21, and seven times eight is still 56. Okay, so now my denominator, my common denominator is 56. I just multiplied my two denominators together to get that. And now I can easily compare. If they have the same denominator, all I need to do is look at the numerator. Which is bigger, 16 or 21? 21 is bigger, right? That's easy. So I can say that 16 over 56 is less than 21 over 56, or 2 sevenths is less than 3 eighths, okay? If I wanted to do it as decimals, I'll show you that as well. I should have All right. 2 sevenths as a decimal. Remember, to convert to decimal, I do the numerator divided by the denominator. I get about that. I rounded the six. Okay? And then three eighths as a decimal, I'm doing three divided by eight. I get 0 0.375. Okay. So, now that I have these in decimals, it's pretty easy to see that 2 sevenths, if it comes out to 0 0.286, is going to be less than 0 0.3, right? 3 is bigger than 2. So my 3 eighths is still the bigger fraction, okay? So either strategy works. I'm going to do the next example as well. I'm going to start again with using common denominators because common denominators can work really well when you do not have a calculator. If you have a calculator, you can do decimals, but if you don't, common denominators are probably your, gonna be your friend. All right, so I'm gonna do five times three, two times three. Remember, I'm using the other denominator, okay? So this would give me six over 15, 
compared with, now I'm going to do this fraction, times the other denominator. So 1 times 5 is 5 over 15. So now I'm comparing 6 over 15 with 5 over 15. Okay, this is pretty simple. 6 is going to be bigger than 5. So 6 fifteenths is bigger than 5 fifteenths. Okay, you can, this only works if you have a common denominator. If you have not found a common denominator, you cannot just look at the top. Okay? All right, and then real quickly, I'll show you the decimals again. So, two-fifths, when I divide, two divided by five, I get 0 0.4. And one divided by three, I get 0 0.33 repeated. Okay? Um, so again, three versus four, four is bigger, two-fifths is bigger, and that's what we said over here as well. Okay, if you feel confident, you can go ahead and pause and move on. I'll do one more example if you're still not quite sure. <clears throat> All right, so for the next one, I have one half and five tenths. Um, in this case, I could make my common denominator two times 10 and make it 20, but I can also notice that two can go into 10, right? Two goes into 10 five times. So I can make this whole fraction have the same denominator as this fraction by just multiplying this whole fraction by five. So I get five over 10 versus five over 10, okay? So that's easy, they're the same. So I'm gonna put an equal sign, okay? If I did a decimal, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5, 5 divided by 10 is still 0 0.5. They are equal. All right?